Our presentation today is entitled Church, What Is It? And our presenter for today is Dave, and we need to make a slight transition. When I'm asked to, uh, to give a sermon, I usually, if it's not handed to me, if it's not a, a speak on this particular topic, uh, I find things, I read things, and something catches my eye. Uh, and that's what, and then I do some digging, I do some looking, and pretty soon I think, well, oh, there might be a sermon in that. So that's, that's kind of how this came about. Something happened on March the 14th this year, and I found it very interesting. And it had to do with our first Zoom church meeting. That was the first day we had church via Zoom, March the 14th. But first, let me digress a little bit. The next day, as per our 40-year custom, Judy and I watched the CBS news show uh, Sunday morning. If, her, if you are familiar with the show's format, they always end with a nature segment. This peaceful, calming, brief, brief interlude comes at the end of the hour and a half program and features beautiful nature videos. On March the 15th, that's the day after our church, uh, first church Zoom service, on March the 15th uh, show, there was an extended segment talking about those who took those beautiful pictures and what it took for them to be able to do so. The cinematographer that they highlighted was taking video in a remote swamp in the state of Texas. Uh oh. What's going on? You stop sharing. Yeah, I'm, I'm not able to change my slides. Just give me, bear with me. I'll bring it, try to bring it back up. Use the end key. No matter how much you practice, something happens. They were taking video in a remote swamp in the state of Texas. It was morning. The mist was on the water. The only sounds were from birds as they glided across the water in their canoe. The photographer turned to the camera and said, this is like going to church. And that caught my attention. I thought, no, I don't think that's like going to church. It might have been a spiritual experience. It might have even drawn him closer to God, but it was not like going to church. I saw church the day before and it surprised me. It wasn't the thought provoking sermon that our pastor brought us. It wasn't the uplifting music we heard and it wasn't the heartfelt prayers. What caught my attention is what happened following the Zoom service we had just experienced. It was in the strong urge that everyone exhibited to talk with fellow believers. It was in the caring inquiries of asking about the health and well being of our church community members, if anybody needed groceries or anything else. I noticed that no one wanted to leave. Even in a virtual world, we felt the need to come together and to care for each other. The sense of community, the caring concern, the desire to share, it was strong enough to cut with a knife. Yes, I experienced church that day, and as much as I enjoy being outdoors and particularly watching birds, I also want to be in church. And that got me wondering about the beginning of what we call church. There is only one place to look to discover the beginnings of the Christian church, and that is in the book of Acts. You remember Acts? The book of Acts is the only book in the New Testament that tells the story of the first 30 years of the church. It tells the story of how Jesus's followers grew from a small, frightened group 
to become a dynamic movement with the spirit giving power to turn the world upside down. We read in Acts 17, they dragged Jason and some brethren to the uh, rulers of the city crying out, these who have turned the world upside down have come here too. The word church in the Bible comes from the Greek word ecclesia, which means a called out company or an assembly. Whenever it is used in the Bible, it refers to people. But people could be a mob. In Acts 19, and when Paul wanted to go into the assembly, the disciples would not let him. So then some were shouting one thing and some another, for the assembly was in confusion, and the majority did not know for what reason they had come together. It could be the children of Israel. In Acts 7.38, he was in the assembly in the wilderness with the angel who spoke to him on the Mount Sinai and with our ancestors, and he received living words to pass on to us. Or it could be the body of Christ. In Ephesians 1, we read, and he put all things under his feet and gave him to be head over all things to the church. We see three distinct groups of people in the Bible, Jews, Gentiles, and the church. In 1 Corinthians, therefore, whether you eat or drink or whatever you do, do all to the glory of God. Give no offense either to the Jews or to the Greeks or to the church of God. The first recorded use of the term Christian is in the New Testament in Acts 11. After Barnabas brought Paul to Antioch, where they taught the disciples for about a year, the text says, and the disciples were called Christians first in Antioch. But the early believers prior to this, the early believers referred to themselves as the way. In Acts 9, then Saul, still breathing threats and murder against the disciples, this is before his conversion, obviously, against the disciples of the Lord, went to the high priest and asked letters from him to the synagogues of Damascus, so that if he found any who were of the way, whether men or women, he might bring And John 14, Jesus said to him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Some church scholars attribute the first church meeting to the event that took place immediately following Jesus' ascension. In chapter 1 of Acts, Jesus told his followers to wait in Jerusalem for the outpouring of the Holy Spirit. Shortly thereafter, Jesus ascends to heaven while they watch, and they then, as instructed, return to the upper room where they had been staying. Some uh, scholars believe that this picture is the actual, actual upper room in which the apostles and the disciples gathered. We see that Peter takes command of this group of 120 followers, gives a sermon, and begins to conduct church business electing a replacement for Judas. The scripture says, and in those days, Peter stood up in the midst of the disciples. Altogether, the number of names was about 120. And he said, men and brethren, this scripture had to be fulfilled, which the Holy Spirit spoke before by the mouth of David concerning Judas, who became a guide to those who arrested Jesus, for he was numbered with us and obtained a part in this ministry. This new Jesus movement was visibly represented by the apostles and the disciples who, like Jesus, wandered around Palestine, communicating the message of the kingdom of God to the Israelites. Their supporters formed into small communities of believers. To aid them, God poured out the Holy Spirit, which allowed them to speak in various languages spoken in the areas in which they were working. Luke tells us, in Acts, that their efforts were richly rewarded as thousands were converted. And in that Acts 2, then those who gladly received his word were baptized, and that day about 3,000 souls were added to them. 
Acts 6 tells us, then the word of God spread, and the number of the disciples multiplied greatly in Jerusalem, and a great many of the priests were obedient to the faith. Much like our early church predecessors, we too are in hiding from dangerous conditions in our world. And like them, we too feel the need to come together to worship the true God, to pray, to sing praises, and to commune with one another. We happily continue to follow the commands of Jesus. From Thessalonians, we read, therefore, encourage one another and build each other up, just as in fact you are doing. Or Hebrews says, let us not give up meeting together as some are in the habit of doing, but let us encourage one another and all the more as you see the day approaching. So on that day, back in uh, March the 14th, I said, here we are meeting together. For the church is not a building. The church is us. Let us pray. Thank you, Lord, for the technology that allows us to continue to be a church. Amen. Father, we are so thankful for our church, for the caring, for the love that we have, for the sharing, for watching out for each other, for taking care of each other, for just being a family that loves you and worships you. If we do it in person or we do it online, we feel the same, Lord. It's all about you. Thank you for this opportunity. Amen. Thanks.